Hello, this is Warp. Um, the other day I got a question about how to uh, receive dumped objects from the Kurzweil into VP and how to send uh, dumped object files back to the Kurzweil. And uh, for those of you who don't use this feature, um, uh, I just want to uh, kind of make a little plug for it. Um, I know we all have SCSI hard drives and SCSI devices and we try to back up our software in, in case our hard drive crashes or whatever. Um, but another good way to back up your software from your Kurzweil is to use the dump command um, because you can dump large objects or large collections of objects at a time very easily or single objects or whatever you want to do. But the nice thing it allows you to do is dump it and get it onto your computer hard drive very easily. Um, from there, you can, you know, most of you are probably backing up your stuff somehow on your computer. So um, you can sleep a little easier at night knowing that your, your Kurzweil software is also getting backed up. Um, in fact, a lot of you probably use uh, online services now where they actually, while you're sleeping at night, um, transfer files off-site um, so that uh, everything is protected. Um, and, and that's a good way to do it. But anyway, uh, however you do it, it's just a nice thing to be able to know how to move objects using the dump command to and from uh, from your Kurzweil to your computer and back. So that's what this demo is all about today. So you can see on the screen I have um, VP already started and there's actually an object there in the 300 location called this is a test and what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to dump this object and show you that it actually made it to my hard drive then we're going to delete the object from the Kurzweil and restore it using the send command so you can kind of see the, the full loop of how things work so uh, let's get started with this um, the first thing I'm going to do is navigate over to the uh, master page and I could do it on the Kurzweil, excuse me, on the VP itself but sometimes I like just to go over to the um, go over to the Kurzweil and, and just do it right on the hardware uh, so you know sometimes I do it different ways and uh, really the point I'm trying to get across here is that um, it's not an either or proposition you can use VP in conjunction and in parallel with the hardware interface quite nicely and quite easily. In fact, VP was designed uh, with that in mind. So, so this time I'm just going to go over to the, to the hardware front panel, click it into master mode, and just so you can see that's what happened. I'm going to click the sync button here. And so there we are in the master mode. And um, while we're on it, let me show you one other little quick thing. Let me go over to the MIDI page, sync up. And on the MIDI mode transmit page, you'll see this parameter called buttons. If you turn that to the on mode, what will happen is the VP listens for button keystrokes from the Kurzweil. So if it ever hears one, it assumes that the, there's a possibility that something happened directly in the Kurzweil that it doesn't know about. And so it initiates sync commands automatically without you actually having to do it. Um, and that's a nice feature. You don't have to turn it on if you don't want to. You can, whenever you piddle around, just hit the sync button uh, manually. But it's kind of a good thing to do because um, if I'm on an edit page and I move the cursor manually on the Kurzweil, VP might not know. And in fact, it won't know that I moved the cursor and it might become confused. So if you turn this mode on, VP won't become confused. It'll know that it has to refresh that information and figure out where the cursor's at on the hardware. So I recommend turning it on, but you don't have to. All you have to do is really remember to hit the sync button if you piddle around on the, on the, on the Kurzweil front panel. So anyway, that's just an aside. Let's go back to the master mode. And let me sync up here. And what I'm going to do is go into the object features and it's going to ask me to uh, pick a database function and I'm going to hit dump. 
And what I want to do here is actually scroll down and select. Uh, excuse me, wrong way. And I want you to, uh, to also mention that I'm using the scroll, uh, the scroll wheel on my mouse, which works for about everything uh, in VP. Uh, it's a very useful feature, uh, particularly scrolling through values when I'm setting fields in objects or on the screen. I can scroll. Uh, you know, up and down without using these buttons or or these buttons or whatever. So, anyway, I'll just I just thought I'd mention that. So I'm going to scroll down to here and I'm going to hit OK, which is telling the Kurzweil I want to dump that object. Okay. So I initiate the dump and the Kurzweil does the dump and VP is always listening for things coming from the Kurzweil and it says, gee, the Kurzweil is sending me dump information. What would you like to do with it? Well, what I'm going to do is go over here and save it in a file. And I could save this anywhere. And I could actually even use any file extension I wanted. I use the DMP file extension by default. But you can, I think you can type in uh, any extension that you want. If you leave it off, it defaults to DMP. And let me just type in a file name. Let's call it something really creative like AAAA. Okay, so that way I, it'll be easy for me to find it. And I'm going to put it in my documents folder. So now another thing here to notice is this button says save or append to dump file. If there was already a file called AAAA, it would open it and append to it. But if there isn't, which there isn't in this case, it actually creates a brand new AAAA file. So uh, that's a nice feature. So you can accumulate objects over time into a single dump file if you want. Or you can dump them all at once. It really doesn't matter. But uh, you have that option available to you. So that's a good thing to know. So I'm going to hit save. And it should happen pretty quickly, which it does. OK, now the next thing in the demonstration to show you is I'm going to delete this object and then restore it. So let's go over here to the delete function. And let's scroll down again and select this thing. Oops, wrong way. And I'm going to say OK. I want to delete that one. And it's going to say, are you sure? And I'm going to say yes. And it comes back and it's missing, uh, which is what we would expect. In fact, let's even prove to ourselves that it's missing even more. So let's cancel out of this. And yes, I'm done. And let's go into the program mode. And you can see that 300 is now not found. It doesn't know what the 300 object is anymore. But no fear, we will restore it like this. If I click into the type in area, uh, the type in area, which you can do all kinds of amazing things in VP, but just by typing stuff in, I'm going to actuate the send command. So I click send. And it pops up a dialog box saying, what do you want to send? And I'm going to find my AAAA file, which is right here. I'm going to double click on it. Oops, it moved on me. Double click on it. And it's going to send that file. So if I go over here and update my screen, there it is. So the object was dumped to a file on my hard drive on my computer deleted from the Kurzweil, then I sent the dump file back to my Kurzweil and it was restored. So that is how you do dumps and restore dump files from your Kurzweil um, to your hard drive and back. I hope that was helpful to everyone and if you have any questions about this please uh, don't be afraid to send me some email and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks a lot. Bye.